Click the smiley faces. All right, we are connecting. Yeah, Dave, what's, what's up? What's up, my man? How's it going? I'm good. Can you hear me well? I can hear you fine. Nice, man. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, absolutely. Welcome to Meeting of the Minds. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. How's it going? I, I gotta, good, good. I got to be honest. I was doing this for a while, but we saw that you have like a consistent time slot. So my brother's like, hey, we got to... We got to learn from Cordoba. We got to be consistent. We got to do it eight o'clock every day. So we're, we just study the best. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, I mean, we came up with eight o'clock because we thought maybe that would be the time that people were done eating dinner. People were just relaxing, just, you know, mm -hmm. hanging out. So eight o'clock seemed to be a great time. Any earlier people eating and stuff like that. So we, yeah. we thought eight o'clock was a good time. Yeah, so. definitely. And we, and we got to think about the time zones because we have people across the country. So eight o'clock is 5 p.m. Pacific. You know, yes, that's exactly. not great. <laughs> no, no, no. When I was talking to, uh, I think it was um, Mike Malaconico, uh, I think they're an hour different. So, yeah, uh, in Texas. So, we had to change up our, our, our timing and whatnot. But thanks for having me again, man. I mean, listen, I Absolutely. love what you guys do. Uh, you guys have bring out great content. Um, you know, obviously, we, we can't wait to start working with you. We, uh, you know, during this quarantine, man, is you know, you get a lot of great ideas. So, um, you know, we're, we're trying to make the best of it, you know? That's it. That's all we could do. I love that chair. And isn't it great yeah. that it's light outside? Yeah. You know, uh, I'm, I'm actually at one of my good friend's house, uh, one of my business partners, and uh, he has a nice little setup up in his backyard. So we thought it'd be a nice little uh, little thing to do. Hopefully, it doesn't, when it gets dark, it doesn't get uh, too bad. So if it does, I'll move inside. So, <laughs> What, do you have a fire in front of you? We have a little fire. Is it is it messing up the video at all? No, 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 no. It looks oh, okay, good. It okay. looks awesome. All right, cool, man. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you tell your guys to do during this time? What's the what's the keys to success, uh, mentally, physically? What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's tough now, man. You know, the, the, the thing is, we're doing these um, these uh, live um, like um, uh, practices like um, yeah. every day. You know, so the thing is, trying to keep these kids consistent like weekly. You know, because it's, you know, it's not the same. It's not the same of being in the room. You know, the kids want to wrestle. They want to wrestle each other. And, um, but the one thing I tell them every day is, listen, if you're not doing something today to get better, then, you know, then you're going backwards or you're staying idle. Yeah. So we, during these virtual classes, we tell them, you know, we have them on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. So I'm only asking for three nights a week, 45 minutes a, a day, and then to do something. And then on the off days, I tell them, you got to do something on your own. You got to jump rope, do some stance in motion, do something else. So that's kind of what we got, what we tell them, you know? Yeah, no, I like it. And I think you, you hit on a big point there that, and as time goes on, my brother and I, we were talking about this, that you're either moving towards your goals or you're moving away, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it sounds almost too black and white to think in that, in that way, but, but in a sense, it's true. I mean, there's a time for right recreation and doing it the right way and, you know, rejuvenate yourself, get yourself ready to work hard, but- there's very few neutral actions. Are you going towards your goal or away from your goal? Exactly. And, you know, the best thing that I got going for us during these Zoom classes is, is the parents. You know, yeah. we, got, we got parents on our Zoom classes that never wrestled a day in their lives. Yeah. And they've never wrestled their kid, nor would they have ever had a chance to wrestle their kid. And now that we're all stuck in quarantine, they're buying mats. They're buying 10 by 10 mats, which they probably never would have done. Yeah. And now they're wrestling their kids and they're building a bond that they might have never have done before. And it's awesome seeing, bro. Really that is. is cool. That is cool to see. So yeah, yesterday we talked, I talked to um, Coach Rivera, Steve Rivera, and he was, and he just got a workout done with Sebastian. Oh so, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so was a good I'll one. pass for that guy, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Feel yeah, bad for him, you know. He, I think he just turned 50 years old and yeah. uh, he got, he shaved his head. He looks yeah. like he's still 30 years old. That's um, right. And I told him, you know, you got the task of going with a, a potential, could have been a national champ this year. Yeah, so, an Olympian. Um, an Olympian. Olympian. Olympian with Team Puerto Rico, you know. Um, yeah. So, what, you know, what a tough task for him. But, you know, I guess you do whatever you can for your kids, you know. That's it. That's it. Like you said, it's the great sea opportunity, right? There, there's definitely adversity. There's no doubt about it. There's things outside of our control. But what can we do? What's in our control? Maybe it's for a parent, you know, getting the kid a mat, 
making sure you're doing these online classes, um, asking more questions of your coach. I mean, I would, I would assume you probably have guys who are probably asking you more questions, how to be a little bit more cerebral about the sport. What exactly do I need to work on? How should I be training? That could be a big blessing in disguise for a guy. Of course. And, you know, one of our biggest, uh, our mottos, I mean, which is like, uh, I don't, I, you know, obviously it's not something I made up. Um, but one of the things we tell our kids is, you know, it's like huge in our club is we say that champions are made when nobody's watching. And I tell kids that when they're like five, six, seven years old, some of them will get it and some of them will know what the hell I'm talking about. So I, instead of me explaining it to them right then, I tell them, I'm going to say it to you one more time. Champions are made when nobody's watching. When you want to ask me this question again, I'll answer it. But if you want to try to make uh, understand it on your own, you know, try to figure it out. And they'll come back. You know, some kids will get it off the bat. And some kids will, won't get it. And then they'll go home and ask their parents. And they'll come back and be like, you know, Dad, you know, coach just told me champions are made when nobody's watching. What does that mean, Dad? And, you know, when finally they ask me the question and I give them the answer, it's pretty, much, it's pretty self-explanatory, you know. You don't need somebody to tell you to go downstairs to work in your stance. You don't need someone to go tell you to go for a run. You don't need to go downstairs or, or, or work out on your own. So, um, you know, you know, wrestling's a lonely sport. You know, yeah. it's, it's working out on your own is when you become the best. That's right. You know, I, I like that strategy because maybe, maybe sometimes the mistake we make as coaches or myself, I'll speak for myself, is maybe talking too much as opposed yeah. to you hit, them, you hit them with the line Yep. And and it's and it's a truth. Like it's it's absolutely the truth. And then it's okay. When you want to talk about that again, let me know. Some kids it'll click for. And the kids going home and talking to their parents, boy, that's tremendous because now you got some dialogue going on with athlete and parent, which could only help. So it's good for the kid to like sit with that and to think about it. Yeah, I mean, just you let them let it marinate in their head because some of these kids are yeah. you know, they're you know, these kids are very smart at a young age. And, you know, they will sit home and think about what you said. And then they'll try to figure it out to themselves until it's a point where they can't get it. And then they'll ask the parents. Some parents might give them the answer or some parents may just be old school tough and be like, figure it out on your own, you know. And, um, and if they eventually don't figure it out, I'll explain it to them. But I give them the opportunity to try to figure it out on their own. I like that. I like that. That's, that's important. I hope coaches – are seeing the importance of that. And I'm going to take that to heart for sure, because it's important. The kid needs to think about it and try to come to terms with that on, on their own. Cause it might be, we might be conveying a certain point. They, they might pick up something and run with it in it. Not the, not the same exact way, but slightly, basically the same way. It, it's just a good thing. It's a good practice, not just giving the answers. That's what we're saying. No, exactly. I mean, and so we have another second motto that we have at our club. I got one of my kids here, Max. Uh, he, I'll bring him in right here. Yeah, He's bring one him of, in. One, one of our guys, Max. Say hi. Max. Okay. Yeah, I'm like Max. scooting down like I'm going to see yeah. if I get low. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Gene Zanetti. Um, uh, his dad's one of my partners. and uh, Awesome. You know, he's wearing one of the shirts, one of our, our shirts. And our other motto that we have, if you look here under the shirt, you'll see the word, you see 1%. Can yes. you see that? Yes. You can see that. Okay. So when I came up with this logo, um, I got a lot of backlash about it because people expect it to say 100%. Right. Meaning like, meaning like you know, I want you to give me 100% yeah. effort every day. Listen, yeah. I expect that of you in general. Okay. But I tell them what 1% is. Can you, can you figure it out what I mean by that? Yeah. Again, going back to yeah. letting them think, you know. And uh, a lot of kids will not, like a good three quarters of the kids will not understand what the hell that means off the bat. And that's understood that they wouldn't, you know? So I, then I'll sit them down and I'll explain to them and I'll tell them, listen to me, our goal every single day when we come to practice is to get 1% better. Okay. Right. I want you to get 1% better in your drilling. I want you to get 1% better in your, in your life, in your situation, in your runs, um, everything you do. And if you get 1% better every day, you will finally achieve that goal of moving forward and getting to your peak. Um, a lot of people, we go to tournaments and they're like, they ask that question all the time. What does 1% mean? And, and I've had people tell me, you need to take that off your logo. You don't need to have that on that, that, that people getting to miss, uh, understand. And I said, no, I don't want you to know what I mean by that. I go, I want them to know Kids. what the hell it means, you know? 
And every day practice is over, we'll go one, two, three, one percent. And yep. they know. And then they'll go home and they'll be like, Mom, you know, I, I went to practice today. I got one percent better. And for yep. a parent to come and tell me that, that they got one percent better today, I think I did my job. You know? Yeah. That's that's a huge deal. Because a lot of times kids will just go in and just putting in the work. Like, I got to practice in. I got to lift in. But did you get better? Did you get exactly. 1% better? Just because you're in the room doesn't mean you necessarily got better. So the kids are thinking about it's manageable. It's attainable. Just get 1% better today and then just get 1% better tomorrow. And over time, man, that's a totally different person. Yeah. I mean, they and, and you know what it is? They, they kind of like, they, you know... They fell into it, man. They 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 believe it, and they, and they and they really, really, you know, kind of just like, you know, understand it. You know, it's like we're talking about Steve Rivera. Steve Rivera is my my idol as far as wrestling club guys. Okay, I had him on an interview. I was supposed to have him for an hour. We stayed on for two hours uh, <laughs> because I could pick that guy's brain all day long. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and whenever I have a problem, anything that I want to talk about. If there's something going on in practice or I can't figure it out, I reach out to Steve Rivera. I said, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I built my model of my wrestling club around him because I love the family atmosphere. I love the fact that everybody has one goal and, and we try to get kids not to jump to club to club to club. Um, I know it's, it's hard to make that happen, but when you get them all to believe one goal and get 1% better, they'll stick with you. you yeah. Know? That's, a, that's important. And I think a lot of people misunderstand that, that it's, it's not just about the rivalry. What it is, is that if you have so many voices going on in your head, it's hard for, it's hard for a kid to make sense of that. I remember when I would have, you know, I had my club coach. I also had a few personal coaches, actually my two twin brothers, Gerard and Andrew Perez, who've helped me tremendously in my life. But the one wrestled a certain way, the other wrestled the other way. And the one would say, don't wrestle like him. The other would say, don't wrestle like that. And I'm just a kid trying to please everyone. That's hard. That's and they, tough, both loved, they both loved me and I love them too. But like, that's hard to make sense of mentally. And you know, what's funny is I never, when, whenever I explain that to a parent or to a kid, I never put it in wrestling tents. Yeah. What I tell them is, is baseball, actually. I said, let me yeah. ask you a question. If you had a batting coach, I told you to keep your elbow up. And then you had another one. I said to have it a little bit higher or maybe one a little bit lower or one with a wide stance that's or a square stance. <laughs> when you get up to bat, you don't have time to think. Right. It's natural instinct. You got to right. go. So you need that one coach that you believe in that, you know, I, his technique is right and, and go with it. And you know what? Give your coach a chance. And if, if, if right. after a little bit, it doesn't work out for you, it's totally cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. I want the best for the kid, you know? Sure. Absolutely. But you're right. Like just being able to settle in there and you have that one voice in your head. It's, it's what we call clarity. Like that mindset lesson, like you have to have clarity. And if you're thinking of too many things when you step out there, you're not going to you're not going to be as strong or as fast because you don't have the decisiveness. Decisiveness is critical. And if you have too many things going in your head, you lose that clarity. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, like, you kind of like, you know, only wrestlers will know this. You know, you uh, there's that one voice that you can hear in your head yeah. and, 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 and people who are non wrestlers won't really understand this. But when you wear that headgear. Like, all you hear is echoes. You just yeah. hear, like, because there's a million people screaming. But there's that one voice, that one sound that will click to you. And believe it or not, my brother was my coach, and I had my club coach, and I would hear them really well. But the one distinct voice I would hear in that stance was my mom. <laughs> and I and she had it. I was in yeah. the state finals, and she was, like, hundreds of yards away. And you I could hear that voice. Come on, David. <laughs> Come on, David. And when I heard that, I'm like, all right, I got to rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't let, I, I can't let that mom, you know? That's right. So, yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, just having those, having those role models, asking those questions. Like, there's so many mindset lessons that we could extrapolate just from that, that you have, you have the humility. We're all, we're all trying to be coachable, learn from people, learn from the best, have those success models. Don't try to reinvent the wheel, right? Of course, we're all going to have our personal twist, but see what's working and use it. It's big. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, listen, um, in New Jersey, you know, there's, there's wrestling clubs everywhere. And I think there's yeah. a, a, a club out there for every kid. Um, every kid, you know, can migrate to their own coach. And, 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 and as, a, as, as club coaches, we need to accept that. And we need to just be like, okay, you know what? 
maybe that kid's not met, you know, you'll do everything you can to get that kid to kind of, yeah. you know, go into your program. But sometimes uh, maybe that mindset's with another coach and that's totally cool. And, and, and we got, and Steve Rivera was one of the one guys that told me, he gave me the number one rule. He told me, he said, he said, Cordova, listen, you're never going to make everybody happy. You're never going to please everybody. And he goes, and you just got to roll with it and just let it be whatever happens. When he told me that, it changed my whole life and my whole view big. on wrestling and coaching. That's big. That goes back to a lot we talk about now that you say that, that like predator versus prey mindset. The predator mindset is focusing on what you could control. Prey mindset is we're trying to make everyone happy. Now, of course, we got to be diplomatic. We got to keep the egos at bay. And it, it is a tough sport. We're dealing with a lot of personalities. But overall, you got to be you and you got to coach to the best of your ability. And then whatever happens, happens. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you know, um, and, and, and it's staying consistent to your kids, too. It's, stay, it's making sure that your kids, um, they feel that loyalty and they feel that consistency. And um, the everyday repetitions, not only the repetitions of you doing stuff physically, but the repetitions of mentally, the things that you're telling them every day in practice, um, it goes a long way, you know? Absolutely right. We say that all the time. You get your technical reps when you're drilling. Right, You get your strength reps in the weight room and you have those mental reps. If you're hearing 1% every day, if you're hearing that success is what, what you're doing when no one's watching, it's in your head over and over and over, you start to internalize it. You start to believe it. Then, then your whole life becomes about that 1%. Exactly. And you know, you know, I mean, listen, the, you, you grew up when I wrestled too. You're a little younger than me, but yeah. I mean, I wish we had the opportunities that, that, that are out now with the wrestling mindset. <laughs> The flow wrestling. Um, yeah. We're we're about to launch ourselves in Jersey, uh, Takedown Sports. We're about to be a, a multimedia platform that we're looking to, to start. Um, so all of these opportunities that these kids have now, I mean, that we never had. I actually, when you first came to one of the uh, clubs that I was at, and you were talking about uh, everything that you were talking about mindset, I'm like, I never, I never got that. I never understood that. I never knew that Me you either. actually had a dr drill – the way you drill physically, mentally, until you said it. I never did. Yeah. never thought about it. Yeah, no, I was a complete train wreck. I think I, I came up with the whole predator-prey mindset to basically solve my own issues right there because I was always looking at the New Jersey Forum. Remember, that was huge. You could see what people are saying about you. Box yeah. scores. I was always looking at, oh, I beat this kid by six points. He beat him by four points. So it's going to be a close match. I wanted to know the rankings and the seedings. Oh, I lost to this kid when I was in seventh grade. All that crap that has nothing to do with your best takedown, your best move on top, your best move on bottom. Nothing. Yeah, and you know what? You know, I, I want to ask you a question. Yeah, so yeah. back in the day when we, ha we had to look at the star ledger to kind of figure out who right. we were going to wrestle next or what we're going to do, and then we kind of started saying, that kid be that kid, that be that kid. Um, we can only see that visually with a, as a name. And now these kids can visually see that on a video. What are your thoughts on, is it a more of an advantage or disadvantage now for the kids as far as feeling that type of way and getting yourself all crazy in your head? I think, I think the kids have it harder now. I think so too. Now, yeah. now because, because social media, now the kids, if they succeed at a little bit of a young age, freshman, sophomore, they're a mini celebrity. They have 10,000 followers on Instagram, right? So now all of a sudden people are starting to comment on their picture. And just as a kid who's young, you know, immature, you don't have any, you don't have any direction. A lot of times we don't have direction on what to think. Turn it, turn we, it we start doing things to, to please the crowd, to please, to please our Instagram following and, and all that stuff. I think the kids have it harder. Yeah. And, and, and my thing is, you know, I got kids, right. That, Ooh, we're a little high on that one. Nice, <laughs> try, nice. try, to, try, to, try to turn it off. Actually. He's getting a little, uh, a little crazy. <laughs> if you can turn that off. Um, you know, I got kids that, that, that I train and we go to nationals uh, with them or Super 32 or, or, or some of these big tournaments and they're friends with kids on Instagram who are in yeah. their bracket. Right. I don't get that. I, I mean, I mean, yeah. listen to me. Uh, if you were in my bracket, I didn't want to know nothing about you until I went out there and I wrestled you. Yeah. And then when we're done, if you want to, if you want to chit chat, we'll chit chat. But yeah. uh, I, I don't get it nowadays. And these kids... It seems like the norm now for them. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I mean, I think it's I think it's cool that the kids are able to connect. I think that's a cool thing. Like you have friends, yeah. but but at, but at the same time, there's definitely when you're starting to get, to get into a competitive season or definitely towards the postseason, 
or even those tournaments in the off season where you know you're going to hit the competition because you're now, like you said, you're friends with your with your opponents. They're hyping up the tournament. You see other people hyping up the tournament. They're like getting ready for Fargo. Another person saying they're getting ready for Fargo. And you're like, oh, crap, this is a really big deal. I have to do well. I'd rather leading up to Fargo disconnect a little bit from that Instagram page so you don't have that garbage going on in your head. Then after the tournament, you could go on and talk to the person. Yeah, I mean, but I had a kid actually talking to my kid in the bracket through uh, inbox. Hey, good oh, yeah. match, like, and stuff like that. And I, and I would tell my kid, dude, do me a favor. Get off your phone. Don't be yeah. on your phone. Don't look at the bracket. I'll tell you when you're up on deck. Uh, warm up and, and, and get ready for the match, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, and one of the things that, you know, when I was a kid, when I was younger, I would get super nervous whether I wrestled a kid from yeah. Newark East Side right. or I wrestled yeah. Frankie Edgar. Yeah. What, yeah. No, no matter what the case is, because you always do the, like, what if? What if I shoot and I get thrown to my back? What if I do this? Why would I do that? You know, and 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 the reason why I think that I felt that way is because I would sit down and not warm up properly before my matches. And until one of my coaches literally told me, and he was like, he was like, listen, you need to warm up. One of my club matches, he's like, you need to warm up. He's like, get that sweat going, yeah. let it keep rolling. And then once that sweat keeps going, he's like, you'll start, you start, your body just starts going in motion, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. My biggest fear as a wrestler, and I'll be dead serious, and maybe you can answer this for me, was I felt like if I warmed up too much before a match, I would be tired before my match. And then until my coach told me, he's like, let me ask you a question. When you come into wrestling practice. Exactly. And. And you and you drill and wrestle for an hour, 15 minutes, and then we go live in the last half hour. Are you tired? And I said, No, I'm not. He goes, Well, you're not. It's all here. You yeah. know? So that's that's what we would say. You go through a two and a half hour practice and you're not that tired. And and also you think about this. How many guys actually step off the map being like, I was just completely exhausted. I couldn't do anything. That's that's pretty rare. Right, especially yeah. as you get better and better. But how many athletes they step on the mat they weren't ready to go in the first minute? A lot of them. So my of them. so so my thought is if we have to err in one direction, err in the side of getting overly warmed up because you're probably not going to come off the mat completely drained. Um, what, one of the things we tell the kids to do for this, so we make a distinction between a warm up, which is what you do with your team about an hour before you step out, and then the pre match routine. The pre match routine is what you're doing 15 to 20 minutes right before you step out there to compete. That's a critical window because that's when the mind starts racing a lot. That's when you're yep. thinking about your opponent, who's in the stands, what's the team score, all that garbage, right? So we say you need to plan out very specifically what you're doing in that pre-match routine, the 15 to 20 minutes right before you step out on the mat. So then what we tell the kids to do is you practice that pre-match routine in your bedroom, in your basement, on a once, once a week basis, listening to the same music, telling yourself the same words, doing the same kind of stretches, and then this way, you know what you're going to feel like pretty much when you step out there. Exactly. So it, it, yeah, that pre-match routine is big. Yeah, it's kind of like, I, for me, I did the same thing all the time. I, I, I took off my shirt the same way. I took off my pants the same way. I did the same warm-up. And it was kind of like superstitious a little bit in a weird way. Uh, but it would make my routine always the same, you know? Yeah. And then we tell the kids, make sure you write that down. Because then, like, let's say you came to me and said, well, I don't know if I'm going to get too tired. Then, then you have it written down. We're like, okay, well, do you think by doing this, it's going to make you too tired? And then you would actually be able to see it. It's one thing for me to tell you, hey, look, Dave, you're not going to be tired with your pre-match routine. It's another thing for you to look at it for yourself. Be like, yeah, that's nothing. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's got to be yeah. written down. I think that's big. Um, you hit on a couple of really good points there that I want to make sure I, I get to. Uh, LeBron James goes on a social media blackout during the playoffs. So he doesn't go on social media during the playoffs. So you learn from him. The other people I learned from is Jordan Burroughs and Adeline Gray. Two, 2015 world champions, 2016 DNP at the Olympics, didn't place, 2017 world champions. You know, at the time, we were working with the Greco team. We were working with the women's Olympic team. I circled back with the coaches after the Olympics, after Rio. Hey, what was going on with those guys? And I kind of had a feeling in my head. They said, oh, they were getting too caught up in the Olympics. Like Jordan Burroughs had a shoe deal. We're not taking anything away from them. But they're taking pictures with Serena Williams. You know, I, you know. Imagine the imagine being them, the poster 
children of USA Wrestling, all the pressure, all the interviews, all the social media. And they said, as coaches, we wish we would have kept them a little bit more shielded like Gable used to do with the, with the Olympians. Like, don't get so caught up in all that. So the following year, they, w- they both win the world championships. They weren't paying attention to the brackets. They didn't care who they were going up against. They stayed a little bit more shielded, and they were able to get the job done. So it, my point is just if it could happen to them, and they're the best in the world, it could happen to anyone. Yeah, and I, and I think that's something that we got we to gotta instill in the young kids, though. I mean, they're, they're very caught up in that social media, and, um, you know, they're, they're, their heads are always down, and they're always looking, you know, and yeah. it's like, um, you know, what, what, no matter what they're looking at, whether they're looking at flow wrestling or whether they're looking at something like that, they're constantly putting it in their head. Um, and it's, 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 it's like you said, you just got to practice not doing that. And, 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 I, and I took away, I remember I had Jacob Cardenas in a Super 32, took his phone away. I said, dude, you're not looking at your phone. I go, I go, I, you know what we actually did under the bleachers? We didn't even sit in the bleachers because the more he watched competition, the yes. more nervous he got. Yes. He, got anxi- he got anxiety from it. You know, so I threw him under the under the bleachers. We we set up a little blanket, and I said, "Dude, when you're ready to go, a half hour before you're going up, you're gonna warm up, and you're just gonna go out there and go. You're not right. gonna watch, you know." So that's what we did with him, and I, I hope to do with the rest of my guys. That's absolutely huge, and it, it affects everyone different. But I would say, if I had to pick a general rule, that would be it. I've heard Jordan Burroughs say that before. The more wrestling he watches at a tournament, the more nervous he gets. So you either go under the bleachers. Get, get out of the arena. Don't watch a lot because you could see. I remember when I'd watch my friends or my brother, he would wrestle you know, a few matches before me. I would get so amped up that it was like wrestling a match before I stepped out on the match. On the match. Yeah. And I, I think about when Iowa and Penn State were wrestling this year in the dual meet. And I remember Mark Hall being right there, like cheering the guys on. He's a great guy, awesome wrestler. But I felt like he was too caught up in the, in the um, Vince, Vincenzo Joseph Marinelli match and you don't see Kemmerer Kemmer on the other side. And then for a match that for a match that could have gone either way, I can't help but think if you're focused too much on the match before you, your stomach's turning, the, the wheels are turning in your head, you're wasting all that energy not in a good way, you should be doing your pre-match routine. Exactly. Yeah. And, then, and then sometimes if you're looking at kids in your bracket, you know, that's when, you know, you – you start to try to pick up, you know, then you start worrying about what they're good at. And right. You start worrying right. about what you're good at, you know, and, and then, and I think that's what kids lose it. They, they lose it based on, um, you know, uh, worrying much about what they got and what, you know, you should yeah. more worry about, you know, your, what you have going on, you know? Yeah. And, and it happens to the best. Like one of our Greco guys, one of the, one of the Greco guys in Rio, that's why they have to be mentally trained before they step out there. He said he was more technically and physically ready for that competition than anyone is like, lost his only match in the Olympics because he was thinking too much, watch his headlock, watch his headlock. And I said, well, if you could, if you could go back in time, what would you do? He said, I wouldn't even think about his headlock. I would think about what I'm going to do to him. Yeah. I mean, when you're hearing it from guys like that, man, you know, and, and at that level, then you obviously know it's true, you know, and, and obviously we don't put enough repetitions. Um, and that's why wrestle mindset is, is so critical towards getting kids to believe that. I mean, that's that, that's the initial thing is to get them believe that, you know, that it really does start all up top, you know? Yeah. And, and and I think that's something that you start with them real young. You yes. start them real young and, and you get them just kind of programmed to kind of yeah. feel that way, you know? Abs- absolutely. It's that repetition. That the better you could get them on board at a younger age. Like you said, um, you spoke about having some supportive parents. That's a really important thing because if the parents internalize that lesson, then when they go home, like that would have been really good for my dad to hear. We don't care about records, rankings, seedings, and predictions, as opposed to a lot of times my dad would say, oh, you're going up against the senior today or this or that. Like he knew, he knew what the forums were saying. I even remember him saying about you, he's like, Cordoba's a bull. I remember when you were competing, that's it. There was some, he must have read somewhere someone said you were a bull, and it was Cordoba's a bull. So now if I was going out there to wrestle you, that probably would have been in my head. You yeah, can't, you can't yeah. be thinking. It's like, okay, so if he wants to read it, that's fine, but don't tell your kid. <laughs> I know, and, 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 and the, you know, the crappy part is that <laughs> I think wrestling mindset should be used for parents too. Yeah. I, like, I, I, you know, like because a lot of the, you know, a, a lot of the stress comes from, from the parents of these kids, you know, and, um, you know, it's about winning, winning, winning. And it's not about winning. It's about every day going out there and giving, you know, listen, I hear a lot of parents, they say, I don't care if my win, my kid wins or loses as long as he shows effort. And you know what? Uh, I accept that 
you know, and, and, I, and I think they're right about that. But there's some parents that say that and don't mean it. And that's what kind of, um, yeah, you know, I'm, I mean. I'm like, I'm like, dude, you, you're saying that, but I know you don't mean it. You know, you got, you know, preach what you say, you know, and, um, you know, I, I'd rather a kid go out there. Listen, my dad never yelled at me since I was in fourth grade. He never said a word to me. Uh, it wasn't until my senior year of senior nationals. Uh, he didn't make it out to day two. And uh, I won my first three matches. And then the next morning at 9 a.m., I had to wrestle in the quarterfinals against a four-time state champ. And my dad drove all the way from New Jersey to Pittsburgh. He drove overnight and didn't stop. He walked into the arena and watched me wrestle my match. He saw me lose nine to eight. He took me into the corner and he ripped me for the first time in my life. <laughs> ever, ever. Oh, and, I, I, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe yeah. it. He was like, I drove all, and a lot of it was a frustration of him driving. He just got out of a car. But yeah. you know what, man? I kind of said, you know what? You know, he's right. You know, he, that's not the way I wrestle. And and he's never yelled at me. So if he's going to yell at me at this one time, you know, I understand. Cause, but if he did it to me all the time, I would never know what was right and what was wrong when he did that. And when he did it, you know, it sparked something inside me. And I won seven straight matches until third. That's um, awesome. <laughs> it was great. It was great that he did it. Maybe I would never have took third if he didn't do that. But... You know, I, I think some of these parents need to be on board too with their kids because if they want their kids to get the right mindset, these dads need, and, and parents need the right mindset, you know? Yeah, that's that's a really good point. Because like you said, it wasn't like your dad was lacing into you on a regular basis, but at the right time maybe, or maybe even if it just like happens once here and there, okay, it sparks you to action. Yeah, I want to make, you know, I want to make them proud. I want to do the best yeah. I can. I want to elevate my level. But it can't be constant because we see that's the kids. Oh, even yeah. if they have success at the young age, they either quit, they want to quit, or they turn to drugs. I mean, we've yep. seen enough wrestlers at this point that that's basically what happens. They're either done, they want to be done, or now they, they check out completely. I can tell you, we were working with two people in different states that they were ranked like top three in their state, and they wanted to quit their senior year. They didn't even want to go out to the sport, for the sport their senior year. Ranked top three in the state, not state champs. So they still need to achieve the goal. That just tells you mentally they were fried. Listen, I got a, I got, I got a quick little story, um, yeah. and I don't mind. I, I hope he doesn't mind that I tell this story. But when Joey McKenna was a little kid, I used to train him in his uh, in his basement of his house in Montville, and um, he was a hammer as a little kid, very short for his age. Um, but he, I always knew he had a lot of potential. Um, his eighth grade year, he was ranked like top, one of the number one ranked kids in the country, and yeah. he told me one time at practice that he didn't want to wrestle anymore he was done and and I couldn't believe when he would tell me that and and I didn't even know how to approach it and um I didn't even know what to say to him because I was a young coach at that time inexperienced didn't know how to really talk to a kid like that and I said listen you need to talk to your mom or your dad he, he said I can't I can't talk to him you know and I reached out to her mom and I said listen this is what's going on you need to take yourself out of the equation and you need to t let him talk to somebody else. So from what I heard, he got take, he went down to Buxton over to Blair uh, for a weekend. And I don't know what Jeff Buxton told him, but he came back a new man <laughs> and he went back and he, you know, became a four time prep national champ, uh, had a full ride to Stanford uh, and then ends up at Ohio state. But, my, my, my thing of it is, is that if he quit then in eighth grade, the whole future could have went totally right. different for him. Right. You know, and, and it was a mindset that he needed maybe a reboot here from Jeff, yeah. Jeff Buxton, one of the best country, coaches in the country to tell him, Hey, listen, you're going to be at Blair with me. Ain't nobody going to worry. You know, you're going to be here yeah. stuck here. It's boarding school. You don't got nobody to worry about. Let's focus on me and you. And it must have worked out for him because obviously look where we're at with him, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, it's big. That, that parent-athlete relationship is so huge. Like when I did my master's degree, my thesis was on perfectionism and anxiety in wrestlers. And, you and we found that, you know, the more perfectionistic a wrestler was, the more nervous they got, the worse they did, right? Okay, kind of common sense. But one of the things I learned that two of the six subscales of perfectionism had to do with parents. <laughs> In other words, per, too high parental expectations and too high parental criticism led to greater levels of nervousness. So in our program, we put that together. We added that where we, where we open up the dialogue between the athlete and the parents 
by having them ask certain questions like, how do you want me to treat you before you compete? Right. Um, what am I doing that's helping you mentally? What am I doing that's hurting you mentally? So just a simple five questions. But we have our kids fill that out independently, then bring that sheet to their parent and go through it just to open up the dialogue to say, hey, dad, this is really helping me. This isn't helping me so much. Most kids don't have that that conversation. And I've seen it. I've seen college wrestlers, you know, being afraid of disappointing their parents when they step out there, even being away from home. Some of the top guys in the country, because they're still thinking about what's my dad thinking about me. You know, one, one of the important. best things, one of the best things my dad ever did for me, man, was, was, was be my best friend. And, and I'm not talking about being a best friend. Like, well, he would go to a party with me or something like that. What I meant was my dad was my best friend because he would, he would, he wouldn't judge me. He wouldn't judge me on anything that I did. Um, and he opened up the uh, the conversation with me all the time, so I could tell him anything. Uh, I could tell him who's doing bad things, who's not, and who to stay away from, and stuff like that. If my dad was like on top of me and and didn't let me like um, tell him the truth, maybe I would have lied to him. Maybe I would have said something to him, like you know that that wasn't the truth. But he kept the open the communication lines open, and that's why I never did a drug in my life. That's why I didn't party during wrestling season. Um, that's why I did all the right things because I wanted to prove to him that, you know what, if you're, you're, you're okay with me being open to you, I'll be open to you and I won't lie to you, you know? So that goes down with the, even like, you know, the, the mindset and, and, and I, and I say this, you know, um, you know, you could, you could have a kid do mindset all day long, but if his parent is not on board with that too, they're just going to do, they're going to break down what you created. It's tough. Yeah. You know, so I, you know, if there's any parents out here right now that are on and listening, you know, as much as you want your kids to do the, the mindset training, I think that's something you should do with them. That should be if he if if Gene Zanetti has you doing some type of, of of mental workouts, I think you should do along with him, um, just so you could be on the same level and playing field with your kid, so there's no miscommunication. Yeah. That's one of the things you really notice about champions, especially at the highest level. They're in a good situation where you have the parents, the coaches, and the athletes all speaking the same language. Not every person, obviously, but a lot of them, they're in a good situation where they're firing on all cylinders. Coaches, parents, and athlete on the same page, using the same language. We're focused on this. We're not focused on that. So absolutely, the more the kids could teach, their, they, they could, or the, kid, the parents could be there with the kids. In fact, we tell the kids, share the information with your parents because when you teach it, you learn it better, right? Like it's teaching a wrestling move. Yeah. I mean, listen, like I told you earlier about the virtual classes, I had this one mom, I think she's on right now. Her name's Veronica. Um, I think, I think I saw her on here right now. Um, she, uh, she was doing virtual trainings with her kid when she first started and, you know, we were telling her, get in her stance and she'd stand straight up and, and then, and then now a, a month later, she's in a wrestling stance and she's wrestling her kid and she's doing, you know, and she, you know, she, she went through the process with us and she got on the same level as, as her son and they're, they're learning together and they're communicating. And I think, I swear to God, when I tell you this, I think this, um, this uh, quarantine yep. was a blessing in disguise. Okay. Because it helped the parents and kids get together and connect at a different level that probably would have never happened in a lifetime. Yeah, the ability to actually be together as a family, having meals together, um, not in and out all the time, it is, it's a very big deal. So that's, that's it, seeing the bright side, right? Seeing the positives. So it's, yeah. that's, that's important. And like you said, when, when those parents are on board, and, it, and, it's, and it's humility for all of us. We're all willing to learn. Like the coaches are willing to learn. The athletes are willing to learn. The parents and getting on the same page, you really set the kid up for success. And like I said, 100%. being able, being approachable, of course, there's the hierarchy, like there's coach and then there's athlete, there's parent and there's athlete. So we're not, we're not discounting the authority structure, but ha being reasonable enough. And as they get older, that they could tell you more and more and you're reasonable with them. They're going to want to open up to you. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then, and then you want your kid <laughs> to, you want your kid to, you know, train for himself. You don't want him to train for you, right. you know, and and there's, and you know what, and I don't, you know, I hate to be completely negative, but I mean, a lot of the parents that I have a little problems with are, are parents that never wrestled a day in their lives. They don't know how, how it is to be in the shoes of a wrestler. And, and, I, and I kind of, it kind of bothers me a little bit, but I get, I understand it. it they are a parent and they, and they really 
want to, they really want to understand. Um, but wrestling is not easy. It's the hardest sport in the world, man. And these parents are, are, are seeing it firsthand during the virtual privates because I'm telling them to do the whole warm up and work out with them. And I see them. They're, they're, they're gasping for air. I got my, my, my buddy Max and his dad right here, Frank. Uh, Frank, Frank, come here real quick for one second. This is my buddy, my buddy Frank. Um, so his son Frank, beats up on him. <laughs> his, his son, he's complaining about his neck getting beat up oh, every day and stuff like that. You know, and he played, he played yeah. at Division Three, <laughs> Division Three at Muhlenberg football. But he has a whole new respect for the sport of wrestling uh, that he's never had. That's awesome. That's you awesome. Know? Like you said, the, but the, but the opportunity to bring the parents and the kids together and. And hey, it's going to get them in better shape too, the parents, because that's hard. Of it's not yeah, easy. I mean, yeah. it's I'd rather run all day than break it down into a stance for five minutes. That's tough. Exactly. Yep. So, yep. Now nah, that's great stuff, Dave. We got we could talk about this stuff obviously all night. Where can of people course. find more information about you, your club, everything you do? Yeah. So I mean, I mean, we are our wrestling schools in Fairfield, New Jersey. Uh, it's called Overtrained Wrestling. Um, Right now, obviously, we're not open during our quarantine, uh, but you can go on our website, cordobertrain.com, uh, or Instagram, the same thing, Train Wrestling. Uh, we started a YouTube um, site as well. Um, you know, we're doing interviews tomorrow. Uh, uh, I'm doing interviews as well. Tomorrow, we have the head coach of uh, uh, TC, uh, no, MJCU, uh, Harry Turner. Uh, he's coming on tomorrow with us. And then the head coach of, uh, the women's head coach, Elena, uh, I'm going to butcher her last name, yeah. uh, Petrakova or something like that. Yeah, uh, she's coming out on Thursday. So, you know, we're just trying to, uh, you know, during this time, just trying to keep wrestling alive in everybody's mind. And, of course, we're Jersey guys, so we want the best for Jersey. So if there's a D3 program that's about to start, we're going to support them all the way. So, um, and, uh, you know, you guys can check that out tomorrow on on, on my Instagram. Um, and, 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 listen, and thank you because you know what? Um, I know we've been trying to get you down and we're going to get you down. As soon as we're back down, I want you with my kids. You know, I wanted to build my program first. And then once I had enough kids, I wanted to have a stellar uh, day for you. So uh, now as soon as we get back, they'll be ready for you, you know, and we're, we'll be excited to have you there, your brother, anybody who comes down. Um, and, um, you know, uh, and that's it, man. You know, thank you for having me, man. It was, it was a pleasure. I had a great time, man. Yeah, we could talk for hours about it. Awesome yeah, stuff. Yeah, 100%. Dave Cordova, make sure everyone's following him. Like his page, is following him, and everything he's doing. Just great stuff for the wrestling world. The guy who genuinely cares and sees the big picture. Getting 1% better every and, day. And, and anything. Everything. And anything. And anything. And anything. If you can't do five push-ups, try to do 10. Get 1% better every single day. In any part of your life, and you want to get 1% better, you don't want to go backwards. Always want to go forward. Two steps forward, not two steps back. So if you see me walking around with this 1% shirt, don't think that I have a misprint. It means something. 1% better every day. That's right. And it's not just what he's doing on the camera. It's what he's doing when nobody's watching. That's why yes. he is who he is. So Thank you. Thanks man. a lot, Dave. Awesome. All right, man. Thanks for having me, man. Thank Take you very care. much. Absolutely. All right, buddy. See you. Bye.